Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about some items from Urban Decay, in specific the eyeshadow palettes from their collab with Kristen Leanne. I am, I don't know, like a month behind on this review. However, I wasn't going to pick them up and then they went on sale. So, how could I not? Uh, so I have the two of them. They are on sale, as I said, at the Sephora website and in stores. The larger palette, the Kaleidoscope Dreams, is now retailing for $25 Canadian, so it is 50% off. And the smaller palette is also 50% off. And there it is there. This is called the Daydream palette. So I'm not going to spend too much time talking about this one because it is a fairly warm, neutral palette. There's only five shades in it. It's $17.50 if I didn't say that. And really, I bought it for this middle shade here. Uh, this is the shade 1212, and it's just this really pretty, warm, peachy tone, uh, which is actually rather unique to my collection. I don't really have anything else that immediately comes to mind anyways uh, for that one. So these are all matte shadows. The formula is so creamy. These are beautifully pigmented. There are they all there. There are they all there. There they are there on the fingers and the thumb. And then I'll just do one line down from each. I still have not figured out swatches, so <laughs> god damn it. I still haven't figured them out, but there they are there. I mean, it's nothing groundbreaking. It's nothing particularly exciting. I really love that 12-12 shade. I think it's gorgeous. But this is one of those palettes that, for me, I would just keep out on my makeup table. So if I am reaching for a more colorful palette or something that doesn't have a lot of mattes in it, I would just reach for this just to sort of fill the gaps of other palettes. So let's get to the meat and potatoes of the collection. And this is, like I said, the Kaleidoscope Dream Palette. You've probably seen it floating around, but there are the shades in there. And... Yes, it has taken me a little bit of time to get past the fact that this has the wonkiest layout of any palette that I have ever seen. In fact, this layout kind of deterred me before I started seeing swatches and videos of this palette, simply because I tend to like a little bit of symmetry in my life, and this is very much not symmetrical. I get what they're going for here. I mean, it's the kaleidoscope dream. You look at it, and yes, these could be you know, the varied pieces in a kaleidoscope. It seems a little gimmicky, it seems a little hodgepodge, but I can get past that because at the end of the day, I'm just gonna spoil it up front, these shadows are beautiful. So I am going to do some finger swatches just so you can see what I'm talking about. Here they are here. So there's a collection of the more metallic shades. I mean, this blue is stunning, and they are just so fully opaque. I'll do the whole swatch down the arm thing so you can see. Oh, I'm going to have the same problem as I did before. I don't learn. I swear to God, I don't learn. Um, so let's tilt the camera, hold up the arm this way. So there are those four there. And I'll just quickly go ahead and swatch the rest of them. So there are the rest of the shadows there, and I'll just quickly tell you what the names of them are. So starting at the top here, this sort of rose gold copper kind of shade is called Corona. The lime green is called Lime Time. Then we have one of the duochrome toppers here. This is Leo. This one here is Brixton. So Leo is a little bit more of a purple shift, whereas Brixton has like a pink duochrome property to it. Then the deep orange is Tajin? I don't know how to pronounce that. The black is called 13th Floor. And then we get into those original swatches that I did. So the gold is Stay Gold. The purple is Spitfire. The deep blue is TRM. And this lighter blue shade here is LCW. And then I just realized that I forgot to swatch the deep purple. So I'll do it right there, and that one is Dye. So again, sorry about the shitty swatches. I will 
maybe learn. Maybe. So with the shadows, the only one that I experienced any difficulty with was this deep purple down here called dye. That's what I have mostly over my eyes today. So I have that orange buffed into the transition. I have dye all in the crease and then towards the outer portion and the inner portion of my eyelids. In the center there, I have Corona. And you can't really tell, but there's a little tiny bit of this Transformer Brixton just down the very, very center of the lid. And I have Brixton on the inner corner and on my brow bone today. And then I also have dye along the bottom. So it did blend and it really wasn't terrible to work with. Like I don't want to give that impression at all. It's just it was a bit stiffer to work with than even the dark blue just in terms of the blendability and, and its smoothness overall. It feels a little bit drier than the rest. But that said, the quality of these shadows is mind-blowing. Like, they are so good. Even this black, like, that is one swatch across the pan. And that's, that, that's impressive. So, when I first looked at these colors online, once I got past the weird layout of them, it kind of reminded me of the Basquiat collection that they released last spring, I believe it was. Uh, and I only picked up one of the palettes from that, and that was the more colorful one. So the shades in there look like this. And to compare, there's the two palettes there. So clearly not dupes of each other. The shades do have some similarities. So... I thought for the sake of filling the time, I would show those comparisons just in case you did pick this one up and are thinking about whether or not you need the other one. Um, I'll just give a couple little comparisons and then we'll go on. So I have to say that the two greens are virtually identical. So this is from the Kristen Leanne and this one is from the Basquiat. And then when you apply them, there's really no discernible difference between those two. Again, Kristen Leanne and Basquiat. So you can see there's a little bit of a tonal difference and certainly the finishes are different. And again, when you apply them, they do have differences aside from just the finish. So finally, there are the two black shades, Kristen Leanne and Basquiat over here. And then there's really no comparison between the two. The one in the Basquiat palette really just looks like a very deep gray. Doesn't really look nearly as black as this one. So the point of that little exercise was just to tell you that these are quite different palettes aside for the one shade, despite the fact that they do kind of resemble each other at first glance. If you have this one, this isn't necessarily a redundancy, just that one shade. So if you did pick this one up last year, don't feel like this one is just recreating this wheel because this far surpasses this one um, in terms of performance. So I really don't have anything negative to say about these two palettes. I do think they, they could have been combined into one. I think it's a little bit, it seems a little bit money grabby. I will say that. I, I get that sometimes people that are attracted to these kind of colors aren't necessarily attracted to these kind of shades or vice versa because um, this is quite safe whereas this one is not probably going to be an everyday grab um, but they, they, they could have mishmashed them together and just charged one price but I will get past it because I do like all of the shadows so to me I, I'm not upset about what I paid for them especially because they are now on sale uh, so I I was not going to do a review on these palettes because there are so many already and because I am coming to this quite late in the game, but they're on sale and I wanted to just share that I think these are fantastic palettes. The purple is a little bit of a struggle, but that is not going to make me give this a bad mark, really, because it is still workable. Um, it's not a complete loss by any stretch. And I just wanted to share my thoughts with you and let you know that if you had been on the fence, they're now 50% off. I think they are totally worth it for what that's worth. 
and those are my thoughts on the palettes. So anyways guys, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I will see you in my next video. Until then, just be a decent human being. Alright, bye for now guys.